All right, welcome to another Dre Golf's golf vlog. Today I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm gonna look deeper into my game at five reasons I'm not a scratch golfer. Um, it's always been my goal to get to zero to zero, so what's holding me back? I'm gonna provide a little bit of context on my golf history just to kind of tell you where I am um, now and how I got here. So I've been playing around 30 years. Um, I was lucky enough to break 80, like there's no YouTube back then to screw up my game. So I uh, just kind of played ball, hit the ball. I used to take the bus to the course, um, which I'm not sure kids are even allowed to do anymore. And then as everyone does, I hit a huge plateau for a long time. Uh, and I was finally able to break par after around 17 years. And I hit a low handicap of 0.5 last year. Um, overlaying rounds per year, uh, other than a spike for university triad, I was around the 30, 40 for a long time, then stopped a bit and then, you know, ramped up as I got older and more friends started playing golf. Um, but really last year, COVID was a huge turning point, started playing a lot more as all my other sports kind of went away. And then I joined a men's club, which helped because I started finally playing tournaments for the first time. Um, and my current index is 2.3. So the two uh, reason camps will be strategy and execution. You know, strategy, everything before the shot, the ability to plan, assess, and you know, choose the shot you're gonna hit. And then execution is the technique and, and pulling off the shot. And the reason why golf is so hard is there's so many types of shots um, and you factor, factor in lie and wind and all that stuff. It just, it's really tough. All right, let's get into the golf. Today we're playing uh, Fairview Mountain in Oliver, BC, 6,600 yard par 72, and I think the course rating is also 72, 119 carding. If you want to see a full review of this course, uh, click the link above. Uh, before we get into the golf, the obvious reasons that don't count for the five is golf is effing hard, and I've never really taken lessons, which makes me kind of not have the foundation I need, uh, and I tinker with my swing probably a bit too much. Um, so hole one, hardest hole on the course. Get away with a drive here with a three wood. Uh, leaving myself uphill, maybe about 170. Uh, hit a good shot to the right side of the green. Leave myself a makeable-ish 20 footer. Hit this one a little bit hard, but not too far by and settle for par. This gets us into hole two, short par four, and on this hole, we'll actually explore a couple of reasons why I'm not a scratch golfer. This drive's okay, a little blocky, but I know there's a lot of room there. You don't want to be in those left bunkers. So I have a sandwich in hand, 110-ish yards. This is what I really should be seeing. Everything right and everything long is absolute death. And here I'm kind of getting cocky. I'm firing at a red light flag. And the amount of times I'm going to fire at it, put it close, and make birdie, um, is a lot smaller than the amount of times I'm going to miss it, put into a bad spot and make bogey or even double. So I put up on this hill, have a weird stance. This is extremely fast and this is what happens in golf. You stack arrows on top of each other. So reason two is I don't take my medicine and I get cute. And here I'm just blading this. So I'm doing the right thing on this shot. And this is where I should have put the shot that was on top of the hill. Um, so instead of putting for par, I'm now putting for bogey from about 20 feet. Uh, and, and that's, you know, you're not going to be scratched doing that too often. So the rest of the front nine, there's not really any more reasons. So you can jump to the description if you want to just go to the, the next reason. But I'm going to keep playing and show you this beautiful course. So hole three, pretty standard, 143 yard par three. Uh, kind of towed a pitching wedge there a little bit, so left it short and had a kind of a testing lag putt uh, for birdie here. Put it close and got away with par. Hole four is one of many elevation drop holes at uh, Fairview Mountain. Uh, the further back you play uh, tee boxes, the, the more drop you get in this course. Uh, this one just trying to play a cut and my, my driver was feeling really good today so put this in a good spot. The tree's not really an issue. I have a pretty high ball hitter. Hit this to the right side of the green, so didn't short side myself, so learned my lesson pretty quickly. And um, unfortunately, this green is really fast and runs away from you, so this pitch near the hole and went all the way back here with a, with a sandwich out of the fairway. Really testing lag putt with a lot of break, as you can see. Uh, put a good one on there again, so two good lag putts in a row and clean this up for a par. Have a bit of a gripe with the architect on hole number five. This tree is really in your way. I went as far right of the tee markers as I could, and I still caught a little bit of it, uh, partly because I can't really get a draw off my driver. Uh, ended up okay, um, took a lot of distance off. Uh, had a chance to get there in two, but then just skinnied this hybrid. Um, but still left myself uh, inside 150 on my third shot. 
I hit this one, I thought okay, uh, but we are at a little bit of elevation um, here in Oliver, BC. So this goes a little further than I, uh, I expected and put myself in another challenging spot. And unfortunately, unlike like the last two holes, uh, as you can see, I did not quite uh, execute this um, properly. And this is kind of a visualization error. The distance control is okay, but just did not see that much break. So really kind of struggling here to save par on a par five, which is where I usually make uh, make up strokes and can't do it and go to plus three with the bogey. Hole six is my favorite hole on the course. Huge horseshoe canyon, great views. Um, you're sort of asked how much do you want to cut off? And I, I think I cut off a little bit too much. I got super lucky, just carried, ended up in this very nice collection area the architect put out for dummies like me. Um, hit a really good pitch here. Uh, if you see my review of this course, the pitching area is amazing. And I actually practice pitching before a round, which I never ever do. So got a birdie there and got back to plus two. Hole seven is 196 yard par three where I almost missed the club face, hit this so toey that I was about 40, maybe 45 yards short. Tough pitch here, but it just hit a good one on the last hole and the feel was there and I put this to about a foot and ended up saving par. Holy, he climbed right back up the hill, slight dog leg left. Good drive here in the middle. Uh, left myself about 250, 260 to the back flag. Uh, I was hitting hybrid here, a little downwind, just hoping that it would land on with the elevated green, it would skip to that back flag. Uh, right on line. A uh, little disappointed when I got up there, a little stupid fist pump there. A little disappointed when I got up there that it actually pitched and stopped pretty quickly. Um, but good 30 foot putt for Eagle. Uh, left myself a nice little tap in birdie to get to plus one. Hole nine's a beautiful downhill par four. Driver sometimes enters my head here, but there's a bunch of bunkers at the bottom of this hill and I don't want to relieve myself with a 40 yard bunker shot. So just take a little light three wood. Left myself an okay spot. This is a narrow green, so I kind of focused in on this one to make sure I got the distance control right. And I thought I pulled it off pretty well and just kind of stopped when it hit the green, uh, leaving myself about 18, give it 18 feet for birdie. Uh, misread this a slight bit and couldn't get that, but easy tap and par. All right, let's get back to the reasons why I'm not a scratch golfer. So hole 10, very short, 150 yards. I'm hitting a nine iron. But I have this main execution error of mine, and that's the two-way miss. It kind of works this way for me almost every year. Uh, I start hitting it left, um, so I'm like, okay, I'll start aiming a little more right, which kind of messes with my alignment, and then I start cutting across my body and going left, and then I mess with my grip and go right. And having a two-way miss is really hard. It makes the golf course a lot smaller, and it really reduces your uh, ability to hit confident shots. Put it in this terrible spot, um, and relying on my putter and luckily I found the ball and got away with bogey because that could have been a lot worse. Hole 11 from the back tees is a really huge dog leg right par 5. Um, you try to get down the hill, uh, if you don't you're going to leave yourself about 240 and that's kind of where I ended up. This one you can't go, this is what it actually looks like, it's a super narrow green uh, on a really really steep slope. That bunker's not a good spot. Uh, left is not a good spot. So I did come out of this a little bit and put it out right, but kind of playing for safety here. Uh, did put it pin high. Uh, unfortunately, the stance was a little nuts, and this is pretty quick when it hits the green, and that's probably right there the most exercise I've gotten in since COVID started. Um, just hit it a little too hard over the green. This was a bit cute, though, again, um, and really bearing down here to not have a bogey. Uh, and my second bow got a par five and do make this to save par. Hole 12 is a short par four with not much risk reward. I just go for it every time. Tons of room on the left for bailout. Hit a great little cut here. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a false front um, that stops the ball from rolling up. So left it just short on the fringe, uh, but a pretty straightforward uphill putt with some break. Um, left it underneath the hole and uh, make this for another birdie to get to plus one. Hole 13 illustrates the fourth reason why I'm not a scratch golfer. And I don't do this all the time, but I do this enough that it costs me strokes. 
So I don't get all the information. So here I thought that bunker was easily carryable. Um, I get lucky um, that it hits in and rolls through, but I can tell you there's been many rounds this year where I thought I hit a good shot and just either slammed it through the fairway into some trouble just because I didn't get the yardages. Um, need to get a little bit better with my pre-shot routine um, to, to take care of that so I can plan the shot better. But I do get away with this one and save par. So on hole 14, this is what I see. So I have a dead zone, I have a single tree that's in distance range of my driver, and then I have literally the entire planet Earth on the right of landable area that gives me a shot. And reason number five, I'm not a scratch golfer, is I do not always pick a distinct target, and it does cost me probably about one or one and a half strokes every, every round. And here, of course, I put it right into that stupid little tree. Um, I'm hitting this left-handed, couldn't even find a place to drop. Uh, luckily I make that and yep, take take a couple pine codes in the face. And here again, stacking error. So I get cute, um, which was reason number two. Uh, you can see my reaction there. And this is a very fast green from front to back. Um, hit a decent chip here and again, call on the putter to bail me out. And I just hammer this one to only lose one stroke, but just a stupid bogey there. Hole 15 is a straightforward par 3, but the green's a little crazy, and this one's tucked on the top left. And you do want to get on that tier, otherwise you can have a really hard putt. Um, I do pull off a good shot here, put it on the right spot. Um, you know, makeable-ish birdie putt that I just uh, overread, but I do save par and stay at plus 2. Hole 16 for me is the second hardest hole. This is one of those forced layups. You have about 250 till the end of the fairway. I'm just hitting hybrid, it's a little downwind, a little downhill. Uh, if you go through, you're on this crazy downhill eye. And here I um, you know, show that I have the ability to learn um, another crazy red light flag. Uh, this time I shoot away from it. And even though this is about 30 feet with a big break, I'm pretty happy with this result. Hit the right distance here but kind of left it hanging just misread it a little bit and bear down and luckily save par but the worst i was going to do there was bogey if i miss this left that's a double hole 17 is a beautiful dog leg right par 5 with another monstrous drop although the fairway does come back up the hill so the overall drop isn't as much if you can carry all the way to the other side this was a little bit into the wind um put myself in a weird lie way below my feet so i needed a bit of a longer club just to reach it I had to take a three wood so even though this looks like a terrible shot i'm okay with that that was just just tough um hit a really good wedge here though put it to about a foot and i almost missed this birdie putt but luckily i was able to bear down and uh, drain it to get to plus one going into 18. hole 18 is one of the most beautiful finishing holes in all of the okanagan uh, 438, but plays down such a big hill, it's probably more like 400. This one ends up okay in the right rough. And here we're going to illustrate reason number four again, just to, to show how stupid I am. Uh, I thought this was just eyeballing it about 110. It ends up, it was only 100. Put it into this back bunker and hit a really good bunker shot. You can see his lands short, but you know, you do not want to be above the hole on these greens. So now grinding to uh, save par and just to illustrate how I toss away strokes, uh, bogey that to finish up plus two. All right, let's break it all down here. So today I was hitting the ball pretty well. And you know, if you're gonna be scratched, you gotta really take advantage of those. No one's gonna be shooting around par every single time, but when you are playing well, you do wanna go low. Um, so hole two, 100 yards out, you know, stacked a couple errors on top of each other, fired out a red light flag, and then just didn't take my medicine and doubled that from 100. That's bad. Uh, hole 10, just really worried about going left with my 2A miss and blocked this into a terrible spot. Got lucky to get, get bogey there. 13 and 18, I didn't get all the info. Uh, got away with it on 13, um, but on 18, you know, again, wedge in my hand, bogeyed that, which was pretty bad. Um, and uh, hole 14 is probably the worst of all had so much room, didn't really pick a target, put into a tree, and had to actually grind for bogey. All right, so main takeaways for me is my pre-shot routine is terrible. Um, I do need to put a few more things in there to make these things habits so I don't have to think about it. I gotta get all the information each time, and I do have to always pick a distinct target, and I always have to visualize a shot I wanna hit. 
Uh, those are things that I do sometimes, but not all the time. And it does kind of leak strokes as, as you've seen today. And from an execution standpoint, I have to go back to the cut. I need something where I know which direction is going to go. Um, I know where the miss is going to go so I can more confidently um, plan and, uh, and aim and, and set up my own strategy. So hopefully this video has helped you. Um, definitely don't underestimate strategy in your own game. It's humongous at every level. Um, you know, I know I'm going to work on it. And Thanks for watching and subscribe if uh, you want to check out more videos in the future. Thanks.